Hello all. In this lecture, we will see about algorithms. So, we will see what is an algorithm, what are the advantages of using this algorithm and also how to write good al algorithms. So, algorithm. So, algorithm, it is a process or set of rules to solve a problem. So, if you want to solve a problem, so we should start from the design of it. So, whenever you are, uh, try to develop a software also, you have to analyze the pro software, uh, analyze what you have to do and you have to design something. So, similarly for any problem solving, whether you are using, uh, when you have studied mathematics and all, what you will do is you will try to analyze the problem first. Then you try to design a solution and you finally you will write, find the solution. Similarly, in programming also, if you, before going into writing a program, first you have to analyze the problem. Then after analyzing the problem, you should try to find out uh, algorithm. You should write an algorithm. So that's a design. So you will be designing that algorithm. And after that only you will be performing this coding. So most of the computer students will think that algorithm is not at all necessary. And simply they will write something while doing labs and all. So algorithm is the important step. That is design is the important step. Coding is just a basic part in when you come to software, uh, developing a software. So the most important thing is analysis and design. So if you do the analysis and design perfectly, then automatically the coding can be done by any anyone. So algorithm, it is a process or set of rules to solve a problem. Uh, it refers to a step-by-step -step set of rules and instructions that define how a work is to be executed upon in order to get the expected rules. So if we want to expected results, so if I want to solve something, uh, the computer doesn't know how to solve it. So the computer just knows, uh, can do only the instructions that we give them. So if, so we have to give the instructions. So we cannot say simply add two numbers, the computer won't understand. Even if when you take a calculator and you will be uh, calculating the computer and you'll be pressing uh, 2 plus 3 and you will get the result. But inside the computer, somebody has programmed it so that 2 should be stored somewhere, 2 and 3 should be stored somewhere, then addition, your operation, you have to do this thing. The, like that, there are several instructions that are happening inside the computer. So somebody has programmed to do that operation. So, uh, so we have to give a step-by-step -step procedure. In computer uh, itself, as a machine, it's a fool. Nothing, it can understand nothing. So we have to give set step by step by instructions, step by step instructions. Then only they can understand it and they can find solutions. So we have some input. And we have a set of rules here, set of rules and, and this is known as algorithm. And from this set of rules and algorithm, we will get an output. So this is how uh, algorithm will look like. So the general form of algorithm is like this. So first step will be start. Then the second step will be if there are some inputs that should be read, then we should read all those inputs. Then step three is to perform those operations. What all operations we have to do? All those operations should be done one after the other. Step by step instructions should be there. Then after that, we have to display the output and stop. So this is a general format of an algorithm. We'll start, then read input. Then we have to perform those operations, display the result, and you have to stop it. So we'll see uh, characteristics of an algorithm. So there are several characteristics of an algorithm. So first uh, a characteristic is uh, it is clear and unambiguous. So algorithm should be clear and unambiguous. It means that each step should be clear in all aspects and it should be unambiguous. Unambiguous means it has it should have only one meaning. I'll show, I'll show an, uh, I'll say an example when there is an uh, ambiguity in something. So if I say, if somebody says that uh, if the temperature is high, you should uh, switch off the furnace. So that's an example. So if the temperature is high, you should switch off the furnace. It is an ambiguous sentence because you are not mentioning what you mean by this higher, uh, high temperature. 
the temperature high means it can be 100 degree it can be 500 it can be 2000 degree centigrade it can be any temperature so you have to uh, in order to remove that ambiguity you have to correctly specify like this when the temperature is above 500 degree centigrade switch off the furnace so then only it will become ambiguous so when you write algorithm it should be clear and unambiguous that is there should not be several meanings for the same thing then um, it should have well defined inputs uh, input should be well defined and also the output should be well defined then uh, finiteness should be there that is there should not be any infinite loops uh, it should not repeat uh, again and again and should, uh, like uh, it will be sometimes if we are writing it will be never ending so there should be a stop final stop should be there there should be an exit from that program then uh, it should be feasible uh, feasible means uh, it should be uh, feasible uh, it should be uh, we should be able to solve that problem in our uh, current technology itself we should not think about future technology and all to write something then uh, it should be language independent language independent means we should not be writing an algorithm for any particular programming language uh, it should be independent of any programming language uh, when we write an algorithm that algorithm should be able to be written in any programming language so it should be language independent then we will see uh, some of the advantages and disadvantages of algorithm advantages uh, it is easy to understand because it's in written in simple english and it is a stepwise uh, representation of solution to a given problem then here the problem will be broken into smaller pieces so we, when you broke a big a large huge problem into a smaller pieces so we will be able to understand the problem much more clearly and it will be easy for the programmer to convert it into the actual program then there are disadvantages also it takes uh, it is time consuming and also branching and looping statements are difficult so we will see what is branching and looping statements so those kind of statements are difficult to show in algorithms and it is very uh, if you are writing very large programs and all uh, if you write an algorithm it will be very hard to understand the whole thing and all so how to design an algorithm how to write an algorithm so what we should do there is some uh, prerequisite uh, when we write this algorithm before we writing an algorithm there are several things that are needed we call it as some prerequisite of this algorithm so first one is the problem that is to be solved by this algorithm should be defined what is the problem that is to be solved then the constraints of the problem if there are constraints on that problem while solving this problem we should specify those constraints we should find out those constraints then the third thing is input to be taken what all inputs are there to solve this problem and finally what is the expected output from the problem what is the output we need to show and also solution to this problem in the given constraint what can be done what will be the solution for a particular thing so these are the prerequisite of a, a while designing an algorithm so after designing, uh, finding out this prerequisite, we can go to uh, designing. So I'll give an example. If you want to make a cup of tea, so how will you make a cup of tea? So if you want to make a cup of tea, what will you do? So if it is in class, when I ask this thing, many, most, many people will be saying many different things. So when you make a cup, of, if you are given a problem like this, how to approach this how to write an algorithm to make a cup of tea so what you have to do is you have to think what is the problem you have to make a cup of tea so that is the thing first you have to find out the, what is the problem it is to make a cup of tea then you have to find out whether there are any constraints to this so there may be several constraints but uh, here we are not specifying any constraint maybe if you are saying that i want to have a black tea so it should be black tea there should not be milk in it so, so like that there will be maybe we'll specify some constraints or i will say a uh, tea without sugar so that is a constraint without sugar is a constraint like that uh, you can specify some constraints also 
then next thing is input so what are the inputs to this thing so to make a cup of tea what will what are the things that you will be need you will require tea powder or you will require uh, milk powder you will require sugar you will require water then you will require this uh, vessels uh, all these things then you require stove or these are the inputs to that thing then you have to find out what is the output so output a cup of tea so a cup of tea is the output that will be required then you how to solve this what is the solution so you know how to make you have to mix all these things you have to boil it you know how to make all these things so based on that you will plan a solution so what initially you have to think is what is the input to a problem and what is the output required so how to reach uh, this output from this input so that's how you can approach every uh, problem so we'll take another example add two numbers and print the sum uh, print, print the sum so that's the problem so here the problem is to add two numbers we need to add two numbers and print their sum then we have to see whether there are any constraints so we can give some constraints like numbers must contain only digits and no other character characters that is if we are adding two numbers so those two numbers should have only digits we should not give any characters uh, for that then uh, there is a constraint then uh, input so input we know we need to add two numbers so we have to give two numbers as input so it is input is two numbers then the output is sum of the two numbers then solution how to reach this solution so what you have to do you have to take two numbers and you have to do this addition operation you can simply use the plus operator so adding the two numbers is a solution you can simply use the plus operator to add this to it. this way you have to uh, find out the prerequisite of a problem so we'll write an algorithm to add two numbers so first step is always start then what you have to do you have to get two numbers so we have to declare two integers uh, num1 and num2 so when you use uh, this variable names and all always try to use this meaningful names uh, you should not use uh, uh, get two numbers a and b so it is not understood by some other person so if you write num1 uh, if you can write number one and number two it will be much more better it will be understandable so you have to take two numbers so declare two integer variables then after that you have to take two numbers to be added num1 and num2 so those two numbers will be there in num1 and num2 then what you have to do that is the input so you have that input now next what you have to do you have to perform that addition so and that addition should be done and it should be stored in some other variable so we i am declaring an integer variable called sum it is to store the resultant don't use s and all you should use sum itself so it is now clear this variable is used to store the uh, added numbers then fifth step you have to add those two numbers and the store it in sum and next step you have to print that sum and finally you have to end or you can write stop stop or end you can be given so this way you have to write the algorithm now you can reduce the number of steps also you can declare two integer variables num1 and num2 and additionally you can do the sum declaration here itself and here so one step will be reduced and similarly you can uh, you can remove that step also that is not necessary but uh, you write like this itself okay so this way you can add two numbers so how you approach this problem you have two numbers and the output required is sum so what you have to do you have to read those two numbers first then perform that addition then finally store it in sum and you have to print that sum that's all so in algorithm mainly we have uh, three types of statements in the algorithm uh, first one is sequence statement this example is an example uh, this is an example for sequence statement then second is selection and decision statement then iteration uh, repetition or looping statement so we'll see each one uh, each example separately first one is sequence statement so in sequence statement all the instructions are executed one after the other so after, it will be a step by step procedure so first step first then second step so it will be a sequence of operations so example sum of digits it's a sequence of operations so we have declared uh, we will start 
then after that this step num1 num2 and sum are declared then we will read the values for num1 and num2 then after that uh, add num1 and num2 and assign the result to sum so this arrow operator means it is assigning so we will be adding num1 plus num2 and that added number will be assigned to this variable so that sum will be assigned to this variable so this sum contains that variable uh, sorry that sum then we will be displaying that sum you can write print sum also and finally stop so this is a set of sequence statements so this will be executed one after the other in the same order so it is known as sequence statements I will show another example for the sequence statement that is to convert Fahrenheit to degree Celsius. So you have studied in school how to convert this Fahrenheit to degree Celsius. So how to approach this problem? So you what you have uh, as input is a Fahrenheit. A Fahrenheit value will be there. F you can call it as F. And what you, what is the output required? It is a Celsius value, degree Celsius value. Now, how to convert this Fahrenheit to degree Celsius? For that, you have studied this formula. C equal to F5 into F minus 32 by 9. So, you know this formula. So, this is the way. So, you have to get input as F and you have to calculate using this formula and finally, you have to print C. That's all. So, step 1 is start. Then, you have to read temperature in Fahrenheit F. Then, you calculate C using this formula or you can use this assignment operator or, or you can better use that arrow operator that means the uh, assignment operator you can use equal to operator also so this means this value will be calculated so we know this f and this f will be substituted all this value will be calculated and finally that result will be stored in c now what you have to do you have to print the temperature in celsius c so it is better to use full names and all but if you, when we are using this complex kind of formula and all it is better to use short forms then you will stop step 5 is stop so this is a set of sequence of statements sequence statements then second type of uh, statement is selection or decision statement selection or decision statement so what it does is some portion of the program is executed based on the conditional statement so we will specify some condition so if it is true this set of statements should be executed if it is false another set of statements should be executed like that so if we have to make some decision uh, we have to we have to make some choice then we have to use this selection or decision statement so whether we will write an example algorithm whether a number is odd or even so this is an algorithm to write uh, to find out whether a number is odd or even so here our input is a number let it let us call it as a number a number itself or you can call it as num now the output is whether you have to print it is prime uh, sorry odd or even you have to simply print odd number or print even number now how to find whether this number is odd or even so you know how to find the uh, number whether the number is odd or even so you have to simply divide by 2 and you have to check whether your remainder is 0 or not. If it is 0, that means it is an even number. If it is not 0, it means it is an odd number. So you have to divide that by 2. That's all. So here the algorithm is like this. You have to start. Then you have to read a number. We call it as num. Then after that, check whether remainder of num by 2, number divided by 2, equal to 0. We have to check whether remainder of number by 2 equal to 0. So if s, we have to execute step 4. If no, go to step 5. So if s, what you have to do? You have to display print number uh, is even. And, uh, and you, have to, you have to mention here, uh, go to step 6 also there is a uh, this statement is wrong so you have to display print number is even then uh, if no what you have to do you have to print the number is odd so here you have to include one more sentence here because after this uh, there should be stop here uh, so this is a set of statements but there is a problem there is an error in this uh, algorithm 
So you, you are mentioning that if the remainder is zero, if number divided by two zero, if it is a remainder zero, you are mentioning that you have to go to step four. So it will go here, it will print the number is even. So what happens next? Next it will be going to the statement and it will be again printing number is odd. So both the print statements will work. So we should not uh, do that. So here you have to separate, you have to write one more sentence in step four. So what you have to write, you have to write go to step six because after printing it, the number is even, then you can stop it. You need not go to this step. So there is an error in this algorithm, sorry. So if s go to step four, if no, go to step five. So if s you will go here and after that go to step six should be included here, okay. We'll uh, see another algorithm using the selection of decision statement. We want to find the largest among three numbers. So the, here the input is three numbers. Let it be A, B and C. So uh, here the output should be largest number is A or num largest number is B or largest number is C. Like that you have to print. Now how to find the largest number? So if there are three numbers, if you want to find out the largest among these three numbers, you have to check whether A greater than B and C. If it is so, then A is the largest. If, uh, if you want to check whether B, then otherwise you have to check whether B is greater than A and C, then B is largest. Otherwise you have to check C is greater than A and B, then C is largest. So this way you can write this algorithm, you have to start this, then you have to read three uh, variables num1, num2, num3, uh, you will get three numbers. Then first you have to check whether number 1 is greater than number 2 and also number 1 is greater than number 3. Then what you have to do, display number 1 and uh, go to step 6. Uh, you, uh, you can change this, you have to actually store it in uh, some value, we will go check it later. So uh, display num1 as largest and go to step 6, otherwise go to step 4. So step 4 here you are checking if number 2 is greater than number 1 and number 3, then display num2 and go to step 6, otherwise go to step 5. Then again check number 3 and greater than number 5, uh, display number 2 and go to step 6. So you can simply stop here. So this way you can check. So here in step 3 you are checking whether number 1 is greater than the other 2. Then display that number. So number 1 will be the largest and you can go to step 6. It is stop. Otherwise you have to go to step 4. <coughs> you will be checking here whether number 2 is greater than the other 2. And you can go to step 6. Uh, otherwise you have to go check for number 3. Like this you can. Uh, check whether all the numbers, uh, which number is the largest. So this way you have to write the algorithm. Then another question, uh, another problem is to find the root of the quadratic equation. You know how to find the root of the quadratic equation. So here the input is a, b and c values, a, b and c values and the output is a root. So it can be a real a uh, root and imaginary root uh, if you can have if uh, you you know how to find it you have to find the discriminant b squared minus 4ac if it is negative number then you will have real and co imaginary complex part mm, then otherwise you can have use the formula uh, minus b plus or minus like root of b squared minus 4ac that formula you can use so in that way you can find the root of the quadratic equation. So step one you have to start, then step two you have to declare some variables a, b, c, d is to use to store the discriminant, then this is to store the real part and imaginary part when it is a complex root. You have to first find, uh, calculate, uh, you have to uh, read the values. I have already, uh, already declared the values. So you have to include one more step. Step three is to read the values of a, b and c. So I have forgotten that step. So you have to read that values a, b, c here as step three. Then you have to calculate the discriminant d equal to b squared minus 4ac. Then you have to check if d greater than or equal to zero. Do the following steps. Otherwise go to next step. So if d greater than or equal to zero, then you can calculate as uh, minus b plus 
root of d by 2a and minus b minus root of d by 2a and this will be stored in r1 and r2 so you can uh, you have to declare that r1 and r2 here so additionally you have to declare variables r1 and r2 also uh, i forgot to declare those two variables also so you have to declare r1 and r2 also here then display r1 and r2 as roots and go to step 6 so step 6 is stop then step 5 if it is uh, less than 0 if it is uh, less than 0 what you have to do is this will be the thing calculate real part rp equal to minus b by 2a and imaginary part ip equal to root of minus d by 2a then display rp plus uh, ip j into j into ip and rp minus j into ip as roots and finally stop so you have to include one more step here step 3 should be uh, read the values of a b and c we have only declared these variables but we have not read the values so you have to include that step also read the values of a b and c and also r1 and r2 should be declared here okay then third type of statement is iteration or repetition or looping statement so here iteration means certain set of statements are executed again and again based upon some conditional test so you'll be checking for condition if that condition is true or false it will be continuing that set of statements okay so this is known as iteration or repetition statement we will give, uh, see an example uh, that is sum of n natural numbers so here we have to find the sum of n natural numbers that is if we are giving 10 as input we have to calculate 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus up to 10. So the computer can, cannot calculate all this thing in a single step. So first it can do 1 plus 2, then you will get 3, then you have to add 3 plus 3, you will get 6, then 6 plus 4, you will get 10, then 10 plus 5, 15, like that. You have to add one number at a time. So computer does the operation one at a time. So it cannot add in a single step. So step one, you have to start, then uh, read a number num and initialize uh, some variable like sum equal to zero and count equal to one. So this is just to count. So if there are, uh, if we are now giving num as 10, we have to have a counter so that when the counter reaches that num, we can stop that addition. And we are declaring and initializing it to zero. So usually when we declare some variables, it is better to initialize it to zero. So we will see why, what happens if you are not initializing these variables later when you learn the C programming and all. So repeat steps until count less than or equal to m, num. So count is 1 and 1 uh, until it reaches this uh, num, that is if you are giving 10, until it is 1 less than or equal to 10 when it becomes count becomes uh, greater than uh, 10 when count becomes 11 it will stop when the count value becomes 11 this step these all the steps that are following can be stopped and can be gone give, given to the next uh, can be the instruction can be executed from the next step onwards so until it becomes uh, greater than number value we have to do the following steps first we have to find sum plus count that is initially it is zero so the first number count equal to one so sum plus one will be done and it will be assigned to sum that is sum equal to sum plus count will be done and also we will be incrementing the count count equal to count plus one will be done the, and again what you have to do so these two steps will be repeated later then again we will check count is now 2 so 2 is less than or equal to num so what you have to do you have to find sum plus count then now the sum is 1 and the count value is 2 so 1 plus 2 it is 3 and it will be stored in sum then count becomes 3 then you will check whether 3 less than or equal to uh, num that is 10 3 less than or equal to 10 it is true so again these two steps like that it will be repeating until count reaches 11 so when it reaches 11 it will check 11 less than or equal to 10 so it is false so it has to go to this step print sum then finally stop so this is how iteration or repetition uh, looping statement 
So this is another example to find the factorial of a number. You know how to find the factorial. So if you are giving 5 factorial, it is 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5. So similarly in the last question, we have done same type question. So here we are instead of addition, we have to multiply this. So you have to declare this variables num, factorial and i. Then we are initializing this factorial and uh, count as 1. Then we are reading this value, num value. If we are giving 5, then we have to uh, repeat the steps until count equal to num. When it reaches 5 equal to 5, we can stop. Till then we have to do perform these things. So instead of sum, we are using the factorial variable. That's same, similar to the previous problem itself. So these steps will be repeated. So this is known as repetition or looping statement or iterations. So iterations. So if we are giving 5, there will be 5 iterations. 5 times this set of statements will be repeated. When uh, 5 it becomes uh, greater than that, it will stop it. Or uh, when it becomes equal, uh, it will execute it and finally gets 5 displays a factory. So this is another example to show this looping statement. So these are the this is a reference. Thank you.